Hello again, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly. So I have here a Peugeot Boxer van. This has come from another garage. We also have a Fiat Ducato here that we're doing. Um, as well as another one just over there down the road. But this one, Peugeot Boxer, it's been to another garage. A, a guy that I kind of know, we've done some work from before. The, DP, the DPF has tried to be cleaned on the van. Um, and I have confirmed by looking at it now that the DPF is still blocked. So he, he he's followed some of my procedures. We spoke on the phone. He's tried to clean it on the van, but the pressure isn't moving, so really we need to figure out why, and to do that, I'm going to have to get the DPF off. Now, we'll have a little chat about what's going to happen. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the DPF off of this van. Here it is, here, the Peugeot box. We're going to get the DPF off, and then we're going to look inside, see if it looks like the DPF's damaged. If it doesn't look like it's damaged, we're going to put it on our off-car cleaning machine clean it and then see what the pressure is but we'll go inside now and i'll show you some of the live data and the false stuff well it had a p1490 code i have just reset that at the moment just to see if i can get the van out of limp mode before i go any further and um, because the revs were restricted to 1800 rpm and um didn't really want to go nowhere so yeah we've got the fault codes to reset but obviously now the pressure is high um i have gave it a, a little small blast of my own cleaning fluid just to confirm pressure hasn't moved it's at 48 millibars or something like that so what we're going to do is we're going to get it off and then we'll see what we can do if hopefully we can get it cleaned um, uh, this would be a case of where you get the odd case where an on-car clean just doesn't work and you do need the the off-car cleaning machine so all right let's get it off okay so all right I'm back in the van I just need to set this diagnostic machine up because we did turn it off for some reason Okay, so I'm using the Launch X431 Euro. We're going to connect it up. Oh, what's this? We, oh, we'll uh, skip, skip, cancel that for now. We don't want to do an update right now. I'm trying to make a video, so let's see if we can find the car or the van. Okay, so what I, ha I was looking on one of these other vans, and one of the other lads had it plugged in with this diagnostic machine here, but I do prefer using my. Um, my launch so we're going to go in with that one all right it's not finding it so we're just going to do it manually and it is a Peugeot boxer euro five euro six one oh, something happened there wait for that car isn't supported yes it is okay we can see the average distance between the last regions were 13 kilometers um Obviously that's been reset. I've just reset that now. It was already reset before it came here, but I had to reset it to get rid of the fault code. Um, millibars of pressure. Well, we are at 31 now. It was at 48, but um, after it, it's had a couple of force regens from the other garage, it's had a clean. We've just put a, a quick blast of cleaner through it as well. It hasn't made no difference, so it looks like it's going to have to come off so we can get it... Uh, hopefully get it down to where we want it we want this pressure to be at sort of two to six millibars of pressure okay so underneath here we also have a vaporizer on this now the vaporizer also may not be working but uh, we do know that the dpf itself isn't able to be cleaned so uh, we're going to need to maybe replace the vaporizer as well but we are going to need to remove the dpf which is over here it's got a slightly different setup on it this one because it is a 2016 so it's an OU16 it could have been an ex-police fan or something uh, but yeah it's it should be Euro 6 this one but it's not it looks like it's Euro 5 okay so that's the DPF off now this comes off with a few bolts here front end obviously you've got your pressure pipes here this is before the DPF and after so you can follow these back along here one pipe goes before the DPF. Your DPF starts just after this little lump here. If you can see that. That's where the DPF starts. Back to here, that pipe reads after the DPF. And then obviously it exits out the exhaust there. Okay, so we've got a camera now inside the DPF. This is a Kai Weed camera. I'll see if I can find a link for that. I'll put it in the video. But yeah, we're just bringing in the van here because out in the daylight you can't see the screen. So we're looking at the DPF. It doesn't look like it's melted. And it doesn't look like it's cracked so looks like we're good to go ahead with back flushing it so now if we flip the D 
DPF around so I'm coming in the back end of the exhaust and we've got the camera in there you can see the back end of it looks fine as well there's no cracks or soot present so yeah it looks like we're, we're good to go with trying to give this an off car clean if we can So here's the vaporizer from the vehicle. You can see that is also blocked. So that would have been the main cause of why the DPF is blocked up. But obviously our main issue here is at the minute is that the, the cleaning process of the DPF is not successful. So we've got two issues. This is gonna keep the DPF clean once you've, once you've got the DPF in a working order. And obviously first get the DPF in a working order, if we can, and then get a new one of these and get it fitted. Okay, so I'm gonna use this machine. It's a DCS 16 from carbon clean there it is uh, it needs a bit of a clean up this machine but yeah obviously it's used for DPF cleaning so we do get a little bit of soot splashing around um, just in the process of connecting it up here and what we're doing is we're reversing reverse flushing so this is the tailpipe end so we're flushing the soot back up where it came from basically so any sort of stubborn soot that's sort of stuck around the front end of the DPF will be pushed back in that direction and we have confirmed that the DPF isn't melted and it's not cracked. So this should be a pretty straightforward process. Put it on our machine here. We let it, you can let it soak in some DPF cleaner for half an hour beforehand. It's not always needed. I think we'll just try flushing it straight out and see how that works. Okay, so here we have some water. Obviously that's connected now to, to this. What I'm gonna do is pressurize the water. That goes into the DPF. Now what we need to do is just let the pressure build up into the green area there. And obviously you've got on the side here you've got a regulator you can choose where you where you want the pressure to be. Okay, we gave it a blaster, we've got a little bit of a splash back from it. Usually I'll put a like a rag over there, but in this case we just have to make do for a minute. A little bit of splash on me. We'll give it a second go in a minute. Okay, so we're ready to give it the second blast now. I'm gonna hit the button over here and might get a bit of splash back. Is it on? Johnny switched it off. Let's turn it on first. Make sure everything's switched on. Got our water. Look at the ash coming out of the, the red ash. Now we're going to blast it. Look at that. See the ash is red. And that's the stuff that can't be cleaned on a DPF because it will not come out through the exit, it has to go back. Look in there, so much, so much ash in there. Okay, we'll put some more water back in, we're gonna do, we'll do maybe four, four flushes until it basically comes out clear and then, then uh, we can stop. I'll put the, the link again of this, where I got this machine from in the video. I don't know if it's that's what comes out. Get the on her. She's still red. Okay, so we're just on the fourth one. Okay, we've got water. We'll hit another blast. Looking better, looking better. A little bit of red in there, but she's nearly clear. Maybe one more go now. Okay, we've got one more one more blast gut coming out. We're just gonna wait until we see the water coming. There we go. We've got water coming out now. So we can give it another blast. Almost clear there. Another one. Okay, so we've got loads of these vaporizers in the van. Obviously, these are from Ford Transits, but they're exactly the same part. You might need to, we might need to swap the hose, maybe a different fitting on there, but we'll get a new one of these fitted. So that's everything now fitted back up. The vaporizer is just up there above the subframe. Obviously, the DPF is there. Three bolts at the front. You've got a clamp here in the middle. That just joins it back together. So now it's all fitted back on the van. It's, this is a rare setup, really, because I was expecting this to have the Euro 6 engine with the a blue injector there so slightly different um, that's why I didn't even at first didn't even think about it having a vaporizer because only the Euro 5 have the vaporizer but yeah it's all fitted back on now okay now we have the moment of truth we're gonna switch 
on the tab uh, Euro tab and we're going to see what the live uh, pressure is now of the DPF. Let's check it together. I haven't seen it yet. We are back, back in. Uh, right, I don't know if it's going to work now because the ignition's been off for a while. Sometimes, usually, what will happen is you need to go back out, restart it all, and then. We still have a little bit of high pressure, but the DPF is wet, so we need to run it a bit. Right, let's just roll it back off the, the ramp here. And usually, obviously, because the DPF is now wet, we need to just maybe do a couple hundred yards in it and dry out the DPF, and the pressure should come down. I mean, it's not damaged, so it should come down. You can see now we've got a bit of smoke coming out. That's not actually in combustion smoke. All that is is it's just steam. It's Steam from a wet DPF, and obviously you get this now it's getting hot. So it'll all clear out. Now we just wait until most of the steam is gone, and we'll know it's dry. Almost there. She's coming down. Let's see what the pressure is. Five millibars. This one right here. So we've got four, four millibars. It's still coming down. We'll hold the vehicle up to three thousand RPM. Thirty-five millibars of pressure. Perfect. Now it's come down to three millibars there. So what what usually happens with these is they'll come down maybe as far as two, but then they'll level back up to sort of four or five, um, three to five. These are a little bit better than some vans. They will come down that low. It's a messy job, but we got it done. So just another couple of minutes, maybe five minutes more. All the rest of that smoke will now die away. I'm pretty sure we'll have a very happy customer because uh, he's, he's obviously been through the same procedure which is why he's come to me it's been to a garage they've tried to clean it they've he's brought it back they've re force regended and stuff and then they said they didn't know what else to do so he didn't want to just waste money on it obviously that's why he's come here to me we've we know what we're looking at and how to sort it out and that's what we've done here we've got we've got all three lads here today but I tell you what what an absolute lifesaver that machine is because without this Without that machine there now from it's a DTS 16 from Carbon Clean. I'll I'll put the website on there on the on the page where I got that from. Behind me there we've got our new toolbox as well. That's the Kirkland toolbox that we got from Costco. So if you're looking, a lot of people ask me where did I get the toolbox from. That's from Costco. Obviously this the machine. I'll put the link where where that's where that's come from. But yeah, an absolute lifesaver the machine itself. Without that today we wouldn't have got the job done. Like I said. Now. Some people would say, why don't, why don't you use that machine on every car? Um, some cars are a little bit too too difficult to do that on. Now, there is one that I wish... I mean, we do a lot, a lot of Renault Traffics and obviously Vauxhall Vivaro are the same fan. I wish that we could get this, to use this machine on them, but the labour time and uh, and to try and do it roadside like we're doing with this, these vans are relatively, you know, relatively okay to work on. Vauxhall Vivaro Renault Traffic, there's it is just way too much labour involved in removing the DPF to get them out on a machine like that. Um, if you were going to take it out on one of them, I'd probably suggest you might as well just replace it. But what I do offer some people is to just say, local garages or whatever, or if you if you live locally, you know, have have a garage, get it on a ramp, and remove the DPF, and then you know I can go either go to the garage or they bring it to me and we clean it in the back of the van. So the one thing with this machine is it's okay when I'm doing a vehicle like I've got here physically where I'm doing doing it and I can show on, on the live data that the, the DPF is now actually clean. If I get sort of trade customers come out, I'm, I'm thinking about upgrading this. You can get a better model of this which has got a, a printout and it, it shows you the pressure before and the pressure after it's been cleaned and it, it prints it out on a piece of paper to you. So sometimes you get a, a you know a trade customer and they bring you a DPF can you clean that we clean it then they brought it, put it back to the car and they haven't diagnosed the problem and then they come back and say oh are you sure you cleaned it properly if you've got a printout you can show them but obviously that's the only thing so ho what hopefully I'll maybe look at upgrading that 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 tool to to another one or just get another one for the other van so that's kind of about it now for this one um, got that, that obviously that machines in the master this is today obviously the Peugeot boxer that we've done it's all done and I'll see you on the next video.